Another big news week this week with the EU summit taking place, but will it be another anticlimactic event for the Eurozone? We'll be asking Jim Wyckoff and what it means to gold on Technically Speaking right now. Hi, Jim. Always a pleasure seeing you. Good morning, Daniela. Another big week, Jim, and what a week it is. German Chancellor Merkel again rejecting the idea of pooling Eurozone debt through bonds. Also overnight uh, in the EU, Spanish Prime Minister stating that his country can no longer deal with its high borrowing costs. And of course, that EU summit taking place later in the week. Jim, what to make of all this news and how is it affecting the markets? Well, indeed, Daniela, the gold market is looking at all the factors you mentioned, uh, specifically the end of the week uh, EU summit meeting. Uh, low expectations heading into that meeting for any concrete results. Uh, Angela Merkel has taken a hawkish approach, uh, according to news reports. So uh, there could be a divisive meeting uh, late this week, and, and uh, the gold market is going to be watching that very closely and reacting to that. I think heading into the meeting, you are seeing a bit of safe haven demand some short covering, some bargain hunting that has lifted gold just recently. Also, there were some news headlines just out that the European Central Bank, uh, an official there, said that the ECB may not uh, be disinclined to uh, uh, lower rates. So, Jim, when you say there's low expectations, are you implying it's coming from the market, and how come? Well, it's just a... Uh, in the past, I mean, this this EU debt crisis has been going on for better than two years now, and they've had these types of meetings before, and, and they just seem to, you know, kick the proverbial can down the road and, and not do much, and, and I suspect that's going to be the case this time. At least that's what the marketplace expects. Jim, is gold reacting the way you expected it to in the midst of all this? Yeah, just kind of choppy and sideways. Uh, I'm also hearing reports that if gold... Uh, dips much further, some central bank buying might step in to, to uh, boost the market. So I, I think we've got a pretty good floor under the market right now. Uh, we push prices above, we push August gold above $1,600. That's going to give the bulls some fresh upside momentum. We've got strong technical support at the May low of $1,529.40. We drop price, prices below that level. That's going to produce some fresh, serious chart damage to suggest a challenge of what is very strong, very important chart support at the $1,500 level. So Jim, if we look at your Wyckoff market rating system now, what grade are you giving gold and silver this week? I've got to give gold a four. The uh, That's leaning toward the bearish side. The, the charts are just still slightly in favor of the bearish camp. Again, if we can push prices back above 1600 that's going to put the bulls and the bears back on a level near-term technical playing field. For silver, uh, a little more bearish. I got a three rating on silver. The, we've got a downtrend in place. Prices just last week closed at a fresh 1.5 year low close. So the bears are in command there in the silver market. Also, as I've said before, silver is not commanding the safe haven demand that gold does during times of keener marketplace uncertainty. Jim, I spoke with another analyst last week who told me, hey, look, anything between 15 and a quarter and 1680 is just noise right now. What do you think of those remarks? I can't disagree with that. It's just ch chart consolidation. Uh, the market's not trending. The bulls and the bears are doing near-term battle with neither one gaining much of an edge. Jim, you touched upon silver briefly, and we really haven't seen it move for a long time now. Do you think we could see a breakout, and could it determine gold's next move? No, I don't think that's the case, Daniela. I think uh, silver is going to be a follower. Uh, I think that silver is going to follow the raw commodity sector. Gold, again, has its own safe haven allure, and if, if any market break out, breaks out, I think it's going to be gold and not silver. Uh, that said, uh, silver is vulnerable to a downside price breakout. Jim, I mentioned on the onset there's a lot of key figures coming out of the U.S. this week and next. Which one should we really be paying attention to within the mix? Well, we've got the weekly jobless claims report out on Thursday morning. Uh, uh, in a, Next week we have the jobless or the employment report out, and so that's going to be closely watched. So we're just going to be watching uh, that stream of U.S. economic data coming out, and it's generally been favoring the weaker side, and uh, you know that that is a bearish 
uh, component for the raw commodity sector, which can put a little downside pressure on gold and silver. Excellent. Jim, final thoughts for investors this week. Well, let me give you my uh, technical levels for silver. If we uh, drop silver prices below very strong support at the uh, 2011, late 2011 low of 2620, uh, that's basis July futures, that's going to produce some very serious chart damage, and that would be your downside breakout that I'm talking about. Uh, silver does see stiff overhead resistance at the $28 level. You push prices above there, and you might be talking about a near-term low being in place. Thanks so much, Jim. We'll see you again next week. Can't wait till next week, Daniela. Bye-bye. And thanks for watching Technically Speaking this week. You can email me at newsfeedback at kitco.com. For Kitco News, I'm Daniela Cambone.